Let us uh, continue with our discussions on uh, <coughs> free electron theory and uh, the relaxation time approximation that we have been doing in the previous class. So, let me just recap a bit. The free electron theory constitutes an assumption that the electron gas in a metal cloud of elect the electrons in a metal the conduction electrons behave like a gas of classical particles and uh, they are basically free to wander about confined to the solid by the walls of the solid. And these electrons have their properties understood in terms of certain very simplifying assumptions and one of them is the major assumption is a very major assumption actually which is the relaxation time approximation through using this one calculates the transport and other properties. So, <coughs> what does this approximation tell us? This approximation basically tells us that an electron collides with the ions in the solid and it has no interaction with other electrons neither has it uh, got any coulomb interaction with the ions. So, the on this basis uh, the relaxation time approximation now says that between two collisions the electron moves freely and at each collision the electron loses its memory of the previous velocity and uh, <coughs> so it emerges from the collision with the with the uh, with a configuration which is consistent with the temperature of that particular position. So, suppose it collides with a particular site particular ion then whatever is the temperature around that ion the electron will emerge with a velocity or is consistent a speed which is consistent with that <coughs> temperature. So, and so <coughs> each collision basically randomizes the electron and uh, unless there is an electric field it has no drift velocity in any direction. So, that is on that basis one starts calculating certain properties particularly the transport properties. So, which one of them we did which is just the well known relation that the conductivity is n e square tau by m. So, sigma d c equal to n e square tau by m. So, this relation basically tells us that <coughs> there is this relaxation time tau which, uh, <coughs> which determines the conductivity along with the density and the other two things are universal constant the electronic charge and the mass of the electron. So, this is a relation that is very easily obtained from the uh, <coughs> classical Newtonian laws using classical Newtonian laws and a relaxation time approximation. We went further and we also calculated the, the equation of motion for an electron which is basically Newton's law as such, but there was an additional term which is the uh, term we called <coughs> the uh, sometimes it is called the drift term which is which incorporates the fact that there is a uh, relaxation time tau at which at every relaxation time the electron basically collides and gets randomized its velocity gets randomized. So, so that equation for example, uh, we used in the so we calculated this uh, equation d p d t equal to minus p by tau plus the force the without this term without this term this equation is just the just the force term which is uh, same as uh, Newton's law. So, <coughs> for an electron in an electric field then one uses this equation to calculate the, the transport. Now, what is the advantage of using this equation? Remember the sigma naught equation that we calculated n e square tau by m j equal to sigma e with sigma equal to n e square tau by m versus d for d c fields. 
that means there is no time dependence in this equation. Suppose your uh, your metal is under the influence of a time dependent electric field. Now there of course I cannot use this equation. What I have to use is the dynamical equation if I want to get the frequency dependence and that is what that equation does. <coughs> we will come back to it at a later point, but this is the reason one writes one actually calculates starting from this equation. <coughs> right so that 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 constitutes the basic equation in the drude model <coughs> okay so minus e is the electronic charge okay so what i do today is that i start with a calculation of the the thermal conductivity of a metal uh, which is uh, so which we know is that uh, when there is a thermal gradient uh, in a metal that means one side of the metal is at a higher temperature than the other side then there will be a flow of heat from the <coughs> higher temperature side to the lower temperature side so that the heat flow is actually opposite in direction to the temperature gradient so let us just work that out first define uh, the thermal conductivity. So, okay. so before I de de uh, define thermal conductivity, let me also introduce you to a very interesting <coughs> Uh, phenomenological uh, relation which was there since 1853 which is called the Wiedemann Franz law. Now, this is an empirical law it was observed experimentally in several metals and uh, it was put down as a as a phenomenological rule. So, it, it became a law sort of, but it is basically a phenomenological rule and what it uh, says is that the ratio of thermal conductivity divided by electrical conductivity is proportional to temperature and this proportionality constant is more or less the same very same very close in all metals that they studied at that time in many metals it is certainly the same and uh, this ratio k is the thermal conductivity divided by the electrical conductivity times temperature is therefore a constant usually called the lorentz constant denoted by l <coughs> so this was the empirical law that was existing for about 50 years before the drudeman uh, the uh, free electron approximation and drude approximations came in Okay, so, one of the greatest success of uh, Drude law, Drude's theory is that it could actually explain this simple relation that k by sigma t is a constant for most many metals. So, I will work it out and then show you how it how one gets that from Drude's relaxation time approximation. So, let us consider a slab. I am trying to work out everything on board simply because it will be easier for students to remember and these calculations are simple calculations and <coughs> therefore easy to remember. So, 
So, this is my slab and uh, I maintain one side at T 1 and the other side at T 2 where T 1 is greater than T 2. These are the two temperatures. So, in this condition we know that uh, heat will flow uh, from, from the higher temperature side to the lower temperature side. So, heat flows in this direction in the direction this. So, suppose I call this the x direction I choose a coordinate system in which this is the x direction. Okay. So, it becomes a one dimensional heat flow problem in a sense because there is we are not considering heat flow in any other direction it is just the direction along the slab from point to from the side which is at higher temperature to the side at lower temperature. Remember the d t d x the temperature gradient <coughs> is negative because it de temperature decreases along the uh, along the positive x axis and the heat flow therefore, is just opposite to that because heat flow is in the positive x direction. So, and that is expected because the if the temperature is higher on, on one side heat will flow from that side to the other side. <coughs> temperature drops from higher side to lower side and heat flows in in the opposite direction in the sense that it, it flows from the higher temperature side to the lower temperature side. <coughs> so, let us uh, let us just uh, try to understand what uh, what happens to the thermal property of the of this system. Now, one assumption that goes in here is that the entire heat is that is being carried from left to right is being carried by the electrons. The lattice the ions are not playing any role here which is certainly is not correct. Uh, but in the this is the way the approximation goes and it in most cases it is it works very well for metals particularly because there is a very large number of electrons and the electrons are free to move whereas, the lattice ions uh, are uh, more or less localized. <coughs> of course, if you have an insulator where electrons are not free to move then this assumption will not work. Now, in this geometry the electrons coming from left to, to right are carrying a higher energy why because higher thermal energy because of the simple principle that remember the Drude approximation that we used. In Drude approximation the electron emerges from a collision with the at equilibrium with the surrounding that means, where it has uh, last collided it uh, takes the property of that uh, its property becomes appropriate to that site or that region. So, when an electron comes from a higher temperature collides in a higher temperature region and moves towards the right it actually carries, carries higher energy than the ones which are coming from the right side which is at a lower temperature because the collision happened the collisions that happened here happened at a lower energy. So, the electrons that are coming from that side have a lower energy whereas, electrons that coming are that are coming from this side has a higher energy. So, this this means that although you do not have a transfer of electrons in equilibrium no number the number of electrons remains more or less fixed on both sides in the sense that there is no transfer of charges as such, but there is a charge transfer of heat in the sense that energy is being transported from left to right because the electrons that are coming are carrying more energy from the left. So, that is the that is the point where the Drude approximation goes in in this calculation. <coughs> okay, so, let us define the <coughs> the the thermal conductivity as was originally defined which is that for small d t d x the it is expected it was actually experimentally observed also that the the flow of heat <coughs> uh, 
is uh, the flow of heat is observed the flow of heat is proportional to uh, d t d x sorry I should use same notation. So, it is d t d x and this proportionality constant is called the thermal conductivity. So, that means that uh, the heat current J of Q, Q stands for heat is proportional to d t d x which in three dimension will become the gradient. So, I will write it as the gradient grad of t remember it flows in the direction opposite to the gradient of temperature and then this proportionality constant kappa is called the thermal conductivity. Okay. So, far so good. Now, what is J of Q? It is exactly similarly defined as in the electrical conduction. J of Q is the amount of heat that flows in a along a through across an area unit area in unit time perpendicular to the direction of flow of the heat. <coughs> so, the definition is very similar to the to the electrical conductivity there it was the flow of current flow of charge here it is the flow of heat. <coughs> so, in this the above example my heat current is a scalar in the sense that it, it has only one component and that is minus k proportional to minus k d t d x which is along the x direction. <coughs> this minus sign is very important remember that uh, that is what uh, dictates things the direction of flow of heat. Now, again as I said that uh, again let us use the, the concept of Drude, Drude which is that uh, we will again assume that the, the collision at a particular point gives the electron its velocity for example, so or speed and uh, that means the electrons that are coming from the left in this uh, geometry in this lab th those which are coming from T 1 uh, T 1 side from the left side uh, have a larger energy than the ones that are coming from T 2 side. So, let us just uh, consider that at a particular point x. So, let us just consider this point any point x somewhere this at this point electrons are coming from the left from its left and also from its right. And since it is uh, there is no net transfer of charge almost equal equal number of charges are coming from left and the right. So, if the density is say n then we can think of it that n by 2 number coming from either side. But the ones that are coming from the left side had their collision at a higher temperature and then they are coming freely because that is the so, they have travelled a distance of v times tau freely and arrived at this point. So, the which are the electrons which uh, had done that? The ones which were in within the distance x minus v t. So, they are the ones that came from the left side uh, without any further collision on an average and arrived at x. So, they are carrying a higher, higher energy. So, that is what we are going to now calculate. <coughs> Similarly, the ones which are ca coming from this side, they have those which uh, came from this side came with a came at from the point within the region x plus v tau, where v is the velocity speed of the electrons, and uh, the 
these are the electrons that came uninterrupted they had no collision in between on an average and they they arrived this point. So, they carry the information of the energy energy information of the point which is x plus v t. Okay. So, let us now find out the uh, the <coughs> the amount of energy that is arrived thermal energy that is uh, coming to uh, the point s. So, let me just uh, write down. So, n by 2 electrons are coming from from uh, <coughs> the right they have their uh, velocity in the positive direction in the x positive x direction and their energy they are carrying is a function of temperature, but not at that point not at point x, but at the point x minus v tau right. So, I have to subtract from this the ones that are coming from the right side they are also carrying energy and that they are carrying energy to the left. So, let us just subtract them now their velocity speed is uh, on the left side see speed and velocity are the same here because I am using a one dimensional model. So, I will come back to the three dimensional case at the end now this again will give me the, th uh, the energy carried by them is from here. So, this difference is the current thermal current flowing at the point x. So, j of q at x is basically this. So, let us uh, so the so let us calculate this now this is n by 2 uh, into v now, if I do a Taylor expand expansion, the first term gets cancelled from uh, from uh, these two these two things because there is a minus sign here and there is a plus sign here. So I am left with uh, this term, which is uh, <coughs> n by two v d e d x into v into tau into 2. So, this is basically n v d e d x into v tau v tau is the distance. Okay. So, that is why d e d x into v tau. Now, this energy does not depend on x directly it directs it depends on it via temperature. So, let us just uh, do it one more step d e d x let me write out write as d e d t d t d x. So, <coughs> so, now the the interesting thing is that the so there is a negative sign that has to appear here and that negative sign is actually reflecting the fact that d t d x is actually carrying that sign d e d t into minus d t d x. Okay. <coughs> so, this much is uh, fine. So, let us now this is in one dimension this result is n v square tau d e d t into minus d t d x. So, let us uh, go ahead and then consider a 3 d system for, for 3 dimension 3 d system. So, all we have to do is to understand that this uh, v square that we have written here v square is actually what we have written so far is basically v x square because there is only one direction we are considering, but in three dimension what we have to do is that we have to convert it to average v x v square. So, in an isotropic system of course, we know that v x square is equal to v y square is equal to v z square and this is basically by isotropy there is nothing to choose between x y and z direction in a isotropic solid and uh, therefore, this should be equal to one third of v square one third the 
velocity average velocity that we that we have been using in Boltzmann in the Drude theory. So, that that let me put it in in that case then we have uh, <coughs> j q now it is a vector equal to one third n v square tau d e d t times minus grad t. Now, you can easily identify that this is the part that gives me the from the definition of thermal conductivity this is the kappa. So, kappa equal to one third n v square tau d e d t. Now, of course, d e d t we know is can be connected to another property of a system which is the specific heat. So, let us just do that and uh, note that n d e d t is basically total number of electrons divided the by the volume d e d t uh, is, is nothing but 1 by v c the specific heat. <coughs> this is the electronic specific heat of course, we are dealing only with the electron. So, this is electronic specific heat. So, then kappa takes the form one third n v square tau d e d t equal to uh, one third c v l. This is a relation that we have been uh, working on, we have worked on for a long time, we know from our higher secondary days probably and this this gives me the specific heat. Uh, uh, thermal conductivity in terms of the specific heat velocity and L, L is the L equal to the mean free, mean free path, mean free path equal to V into tau. Okay. <coughs> Yeah, here I should not have the v because I have this is the specific this is the definition of the specific heat. So, this v is not there. Okay. So, that gives me the uh, the value of the thermal conductivity in terms of two uh, simple parameters which of the system which are the c v and the mean free path. Of course, mean free path is not easy to determine. Uh, so, that that is the only thing that is still here which is indeterminate in the sense that we have to determine it from other quantities like conductivity for example, from conductivity one can find out the tau the relaxation time and v times tau will give you the uh, L for example. <coughs> okay. Now, the point we started was Wiedemann Franz law. So, let us calculate the k by sigma t k by sigma for example, from this previous relation of uh, electrical conductivity and now what we got for the thermal conductivity which is one third C V L divided by n square tau by m. which uh, actually is very simple to get uh, to to write down again one third c uh, this now l is v square v tau so it is it becomes v square tau and times m divided by n e square and uh, that is uh, n square tau. So, this gives me a cancellation of the tau which is uh, something which is not easy to determine and uh, which actually is a uh, which now it uh, com is coming back to a form which is easily connected to 
uh, experimental quantities for example, for example, let us see what we do is that we write this as one third c times half m v square by n square. Now, let uh, now look at it classically we know these values series uh, c for example, as far as Drude was concerned classically c was 3 by 2 k b t 3 by 2 n k b and uh, half m v square is 3 by 2 k b t. Therefore, this ratio k by sigma is uh, <coughs> becoming 3 by 2 uh, you can put that all in here and uh, as you can see the n cancels with this n and then you are left with only this k b by e square into temperature and uh, that means k by sigma t is equal to 3 by 2 k b by e square and both k b and e are just universal constants and if you calculate it this turns out to be around 1.11 into 10 to the power minus 8 watt ohm per kelvin square. So, this is basically the explanation of a constant value of this ratio k by sigma t that Wiedemann and Franz obtained empirically through experimental results through observations from the Drude model. So, this actually was a success considered a great success for the Drude theory of uh, relaxation time approximation uh, for a free electron model and it is a puzzle in the sense that uh, these systems are highly quantum systems of, as we will see later on and uh, a classical relation completely worked out classically with a relaxation time approximation gives us a value which is in actual reality I can show you that uh, there are systems where this thing is uh, see this is the relation that I mentioned and uh, you can see that uh, there is a I have a table which shows that uh, most of these metals for example, silver, aluminum, gold, copper, iron, molybdenum, lead, platinum, tungsten and uh, these are uh, in these materi materials that quantity that Lorentz number k by sigma t that uh, is 2.31, 2.23, 2.35, 2.30, 2.47, 2.61, 2.45, 2.51, 3.06 and 2.45. I mean it is remarkable that they, such a classical theory for, uh, for a large number of electrons which are interacting with it uh, with its themselves through uh, Coulomb interaction as well as interacting with the lattice even then a classical description gives such a good number and it turns out to be a mystery, but one now understands why this thing happens, but uh, it is still a very very good uh, it looks like a very very good approximation for discussing the transport of certain metals.